Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve a problem that you will find on page number 200. And 69, page number 269, dealing with scatter plot, dealing with the concept of scatter plot. You must have the book in front of you, otherwise you will have trouble following me because I'm not going to put down everything on the blackboard because the question is rather long. I have put down the abridged version here, and soon I'm going to erase it. So you must have the book in front of you. Turn to page number 269 and read the problem with me. Example number 4.1.7. It says, a bicycle trainer studied 50 bicyclists to examine how finishing time was related to the training. And they go on to tell you some more detail uh, as to how he arrived at the indices, uh, rather index for the training and so on and so forth. You can read the rest yourself. Now in the problem that you see in front of you there, he has 50 bicyclists. Obviously, we're not going to put all 50 on the blackboard here. We're going to be here forever. So we're going to do our own version and we're going to have only 10 bicyclists. And I'm going to give you the data as to what was found for this 10 bicyclists and we're going to make a scatter plot. We're going to plot this thing and then once we have plotted it, we're going to answer a couple of questions based on those, based on, based on the plot that we arrive at. So here's, here are the 10 people. I'm going to actually erase all this thing because we don't need it and I need room. Again, one more time, it says a bicycle, a bicycle train, a bicycle, a bicycle trainer he studied 10 bicyclists to examine how finishing time was related to the training and this is what he found. One point, 4.1.7 Here's your training units training units and here's your finishing time your finishing time in minutes, uh, in hours and minutes. Here we go. One, two, three. For the first three individually found 100, 20, 60. 100, 20, 60. And their times were 3, 10, 5, 10, 4. 3, 10, 5, 10, 4. 3, 10, 5, 10, 4. Let's, let's start plotting them here. So here we're going to have our chart here. This is going to be the training index. And it goes all the way up to 100. So halfway around here somewhere it's going to be 50. And then we're going to break it up into five equal parts. One, two, three, four. As I said, as you can see, I did not do a very good job here. One, two, three, four. There we go. So those are, uh, that's our x-axis, which, which is where we're going to measure uh, how much they train, which is the independent variable training index, and we're going to find out how the finishing time depends, how it varies based on how much they train. And we have three individuals already, let's plot them. This guy trained for 100 units way over here, and he finished in 3 hours and 10 minutes. 3 hours and 10 minutes. So we, And we're not going to go all the way from zero. So that'll be a waste of space, so let's just, let's just put three here. And we're going to go all the way up to six. So four, five, and six. Is it good enough? All right. And we're going to break each one of this area, each one of this space, into six equal parts. There you go. So each part represents 10 minutes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and the fourth hour. Again, 10, 20, 30, four and a half hours. 10, 20, 30, and five hours. It's five and a half hours, 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30, and there is your six hours. And if it gets too crowded, I'm going to erase the top part. Let's, let's begin. Let's, let's see what, how, how to plot this thing. So the first guy, he trained for 100 units, and he was able to finish in 10, three hours and 10 minutes. So three hours and 10 minutes is right here, and he trained for 100 units right here. That's our first. Let's, let's put a one next to him so we can keep track of everyone. Let's pick up speed. 
The second guy trained for 20 units and he took 5 hours and 10 minutes. 20 units, right here, 20 units, and he took finish 5 hours and 10 minutes. 5 hours and 10 minutes right there, and he, he, and he, and he, he trained for 20 units. That was not good. I'm going to redo it. I knew I shouldn't have started from the top because I don't know where I was going to end up. Yeah. As long as, as long as you're reasonable, as long as you don't do too lousy of a job, it's okay. There we go. Third guy, he trained for 60 units and he, tra he finished in 4 hours. 60 units is right here and he finished in 4 hours. Third guy. Let's do 3 more. Let's do 4 more. 4, 5, 6 and 7. We have 20, 80, 30, 30. 20, 80, 30 and 30. And we have 430, 320, 430, 320, 420, and 450. Now you understand this data is not in the book, I'm just making it up. I'm giving you the abridged version of it instead of dealing with 50 people. We just, just deal with 10 people. Just to give you the flavor, just to give you the idea as to how to plot it and how it's going to look like at the end and how to answer question based on it. Once we're once we able to answer the questions based on 10 bicyclists, then we'll attempt the problem that is in the book, which has 50 people in it. So, he trained for 20 units and he finished for four and a half hours. 20 units is right here, or 20 units is right here. We must have another person with 20 units. Very good. This here, 20 units, this guy also was 20 units. Right here. And he finished in four, hour, four hours and 30 minutes. Four hours, four hours and 30 minutes. Right here. Oh, there we go. And this was guy number four. 80 units, 320. 80 units is going to be way over here. 60, 70, 80. And 3 hours and 20 minutes. 3 hours and 20 minutes, 3 hours and 20 minutes. Is that right? Let's, let's not be too hasty. This is 3 hours. 1, 2, 3. This is 3 and a half hours. 1, 2. This is 3 hours and 20 minutes. And how long did it take? Uh, how, how long did it train? 80 units. And that was guy number 5. He trained for 30 units and he was able to finish in 4 hours and 20 minutes. 30 units, 1, 2, 3, and 4 hours and 20 minutes is going to be right here. This is your 4 hours, 1 and 2. And that was guy number 6. He trained also for 30 units and he finished in 4 hours and 50 minutes. 4 hours and 50 minutes is going to be way up here. That was guy number 7. Let's carry on. You have 8. 9 and 10, 10 people, 70, 40, 50, 70, 40, and 50, 430, 4, 420, 430, 4, 420, let's see what they look like, 430, 470, there is your 70, and 430 is going to be, 430 is right here, and there is your 70, 70, and 430, that's our guy number 8, then we have guy number 9, which is 40 and four, 4 hours exactly. 40 is right here and 4 hours exactly is right here. 4 hours is right here. That's our guy number 8. Oh, that was our guy number 9. That is 8. And finally, the last guy, he trained for 50 units and he was able to do it in 4 hours and 20 minutes. 50 units right here. 4 hours and 20 minutes. 4 hours and 20 minutes. That's the four hours. We need to go 20 minutes. That tells us that we must have another guy at four hours and 20 minutes. Where? Right here. Four hours and 20 minutes, four hours and 20 minutes. We have two guys at four hours and 20 minutes right here. Four hours and 20 minutes. This is four. One, two, four. Oh, four hours and 20 minutes. Should have been. This is 10, 20. 50 and 4 hours and 20 minutes. 50 and 4 hours and 20 minutes. 10, 20, right here. This is our guy number 10. This was, this 6 belongs here. That's it. Those are our data. We're going to make a chart. See what it looks like. We're going to make a, make a graph. And this is where a little bit of a skill comes in, into it. 
there is a there is a method methodology mathematical way it is called regression ordinary least square is what is known as OL, OLS we call it OLS ordinary least square OLS not OLE ordinary least square OLS we call it and using that method we can actually figure out the precise slope of this line once we know the precise slope we know exactly where to plot it that ordinary least square will give us the intercept and the precise slope and we can figure out exactly what is going to be the shape of the line which is given to give us the least deviation from the mean we want this deviation from the line that we are about to plot least as possible we want all of these points to be very close to the line that we're going to plot but we we are not going to do this method obviously GRE does not require this method GRE does not assume that knowledge on your part we're not going to worry about it but what I'm trying to tell you is that there is actually a method a sane way of doing it we don't just do it freehand but here since GRE does not assume the knowledge and we don't have to do it we're just going to plot it freehand so let's first look at all the points there is your one there is your two there is your three there is your four there is your five there is your six there is a seven there is the eight and there is a nine and there is a ten now the line we're going to draw we have to be very careful because i don't have a luxury of being able to raise it it has to it has to fit very nicely i'm going to actually see if i can actually i have a ruler but that that ruler is my god is huge or maybe some something like this something like this right here this is what we're going to do here which I think is going to give us the least possible deviations from the mean I think so right here I'm going to put it right right about here just to hold my hand steady voila this is about the best we are able to we are going to do and that's your that's your fit this is called the fit which is what you see there the scatter plot Let's answer a couple of questions based on it, okay? Let's see what we can do. The first question is, and again, if you're interested to know where we are going with this thing, turn to page number 294 for a second. Page number 294. Example 4.6.3. This is the problem that we are about to do, but before we do that problem that is in the book, we are doing a simpler version with only 10 people, and then we're going to do the problem in the book, which actually has the problem that is studied in front of us, that is presented in front of us with 50 individuals. Let's do this. Let's do a simple version first. We need the room obviously. So I'm going to raise all the data. Just give me one second. Let's go. First question is the bicyclist bicyclist with the training of 60 units will finish will finish in approximately in approximately how many hours that's what it is in other words they're giving you the x coordinate our job is to find the y coordinates based on this line that we have fitted there not based on the actual observation but the line that we have fitted there is very simple very straight forward the 60 units is the x, x, x coordinate of the point what is the corresponding y coordinate to simply go up here or right here right about here is the answer and i'm just going to eyeball it let's just assume that this is right this was 4 4 30 it looks like 4 4 uh, this was 3 30 looks like 3 40. the answer is it's going to finish in about three hours and 40 minutes our line, our, our scatter plot predicts that the person who trains for 60 units is suspected to finish the, the race in about 3 hours and 40 minutes. That's the prediction. 
even though even though the guy who actually trained for 60 units in our data among the 10 people he finished way up there but he is a little bit away from the norm here that's the fitting line here he finished almost four hours but our, our, our scatter plot predicts that it should take about three hours and 40 minutes let's answer the next question next question is tricky again I'm going to raise this thing that's it that's how simple it is it only takes a couple of seconds to answer the question you just have to go go to the plot one more time did I do right 60 there you go that was 60 right here that was 60 and you go up 60 units right here and it fits right there and that is that is three three hours and 40 minutes this is three hours 30 minutes 40 minutes 50 minutes and four hours each each tick mark is 10 minutes they are they're divided into six parts from here to here from here to here is divided into six parts one two three four five six each of them is 10 minutes so it's three hours and 40 minutes question number two do it yourself the next question do it yourself it says what is the what is the approximate slope of the trend line this is called the trend line that's the trend we see this is called the trend line or sometimes it's called the fitted line or sometimes it's called the regression line trend line I'm going to I'm going to ask you now to pause the video and do it yourself find any two points you like any two points at all here there are 10 of them here there are there are 10 observations here find any two points that you like that you think are very close to the fitted line here but don't pick the two points too close to each other like this and this would not be a good idea you want to find you want to estimate the slope of this line it's a good idea to pick points that are kind of far apart pick any two points that you like and also do not pick something like this they have to be very close to the line and do what you can and find the slope I'm going to give you five seconds for you for you to be able to pause and unpause the video let's do this shall we so our slope is simply the change in the y-axis is the time change in y over the change in x delta x which is the training which two individuals do you want to pick? That's our, 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 we have to make a decision. Which two individuals do I, do I want to pick? Let's pick this guy. This guy seems very close. This guy. Two. We're going to pick two. Use two and use... I don't want you to get confused as to what is two. Use guy number two. Use guy number two and guy number I don't know why it has to be guy it might be a girl who knows and let's use 5 5 is very close to the line here I'm going to use these two 2 and 5 what are the observation for 2 2 was 2 was 20 units and 5 10 20 and 5 10 and 5 was guy number five where is guy number five right here is the guy number five 80 80 and 320 you understand it might not come out as nicely as it's supposed to be like the way it is in the book because I'm doing it freehand and I'm doing it impromptu so we'll see what happens because the points that I use in my notes are different okay let's do it then we need the room so we're going to do it on the top we're going to do it on the top so our slope that we're looking for is going to be the change in y 20 minus 80 20 minus 80 of course is going to be negative we're going to have to have a negative either on the top or on the bottom if you go from here to here it's going to be at the bottom because it's going to be 80 minus 20 and then this minus that but it's, of course it's negative has to appear because it's, neg it's negatively slope line it's negatively slope line because it tells us that the more you train the faster you will finish the less time you will take or to put another way around if you want to finish as quickly as possible you have to train a lot so if you want your time to be minimum the training has to be maximum they are inversely related I don't know why I have the urge to point out these bloody obvious things the difference would have been exactly two listen carefully okay the difference would have been exactly two the difference would have been exactly two but now it's going to be two hours and actually one hour and fifty minutes one hour and fifty minutes which is one in five six I don't know where we're going to go with that keep your fingers crossed keep your fingers crossed 
and I think I have it I have it wrong. The index should go on the bottom. The index should go on the bottom, that's our training. Which is 20 minus 80. And 20 minus 20 minus 80, which is going to give us negative, and 510 minus 310 would have been exactly two hours, so it's going to be one hour and fifty minutes, which is one hour and five six one and five six hours. We need the room obviously, we're gonna erase all of this thing. I don't know where we're going to go with it, as I told you already, but we'll see. If you work on this thing, it's going to be 6 times 1 is uh, 6, obviously, plus 5 is 11, so it's 11 sixth over negative 60. Negative 60, which I'm going to put down as negative 6 times 10. Okay, watch what happens. Actually, this is nothing is going to happen, because I was going to cancel out this 6 and this 6. We can't do that. I don't know why I'm doing it this way. Anyway, let's continue. So, I hope I didn't make a mistake. So, it's going to be 11 over... Let's put the negative on the front. 36 times 10. And that's it. At this point you have no choice but to pick up the calculator. And unfortunately I don't have a calculator handy. Which was not a very smart thing for me to do. And I have a dictionary here which is supposedly have a calculator but I never used it. So I have to figure out how to do the plastic thing. But let's see what happens. 11. 11 divided by 36 just give me one second okay just be patient to start again as I told you I've never used it now I don't know how to clear it I pressed the wrong key there we go 11 divided by divided by oh Jesus this is ruining the whole thing I want to really figure out let me try one more time okay I should have had a fourth thought of having an actual calculator with me I thought I was going to end up with something that I can do by hand. This we can cross out, but even if we were to approximate this thing, I still don't. We still don't know what 136 is. Let's do one more time. 11 This is I know it's taking too much time and you I'm going to end up losing you. 11 Where's the division sign? Divided by 36 3 Six. There we go. Where is the equal sign? I think you just press enter. Oh, point three. Point three zero. It goes. It goes on to say. Point three zero five five. This is what we get now. If you open the book, at the bottom of the book where they have fifty observations, with the fifty observation they arrive at point zero two six. Point zero. This is 0 0.3. 6 plus 5 is 11. 11 over 6. This is 60. Oh, I did I did 11 divided by 36, but then we still have to divide by 3. Uh, we still have to divide by 10. So this is not right. It should have been 0, 3, 0, 5, 5. 0, 3, 0, 5, 5. That, that is much better. Because in the book, the slope that they arrive at, the bottom of page, if you look at the bottom of page number 269, they arrive at 0 0.026. There we go. And ours is, ours is uh, 0 .0 0 0.3. Anyway, this is the thing. What does it tell us? Which we're going to approximate as 0 0.03. What, uh, last, last question is, what does this tell us? Does it tell us anything? Well, let's find out on the top. How do we interpret it? The question is, how do we interpret this thing? What this tells us is that for every for every one unit of training, for every one unit of training, the time, the finishing time that is, will fall by 0 0.03 of an hour. Of an hour. 
Let's see what we can do with it, okay? I'm going to erase this thing. We are done with all this. This is what we arrive at. The book, according to book, it is 0 0.026. We are at 0 0.03 because of the way we plotted it there. But we can't leave it like this. We can't leave this in a raw form like this. We have to cook it a little bit. We have to make it refine. So it says, the, what the slope tells us is that for every one unit of training, the finishing time, the finished finishing time will fall by 0 0.03 of an hour. 0 0.03 of an hour, if you multiply it by 60, uh, 60 times 3 is 180 of course, and you have to move the two decimal places, which is which is going to give us 18 minutes. 0 0.03 of an hour is going to be 18 minutes, no not 18 minutes, 60 times 3 60 times 3 is going to be 180 and we have to move it to the two decimal places 1 2 1.8 1.8 minute there we go what this tells us is that what is what it tells okay we can make it even better so what this is what it tells us what it tells us is that for every one unit of the training you can expect your finishing time to reduce by 1.8 minutes or if you like or if you like instead of ten, every one unit we can speak in terms of like this this is what it says is that for every 10 units of training you can expect your, your finishing time to go down by 0 0.03 times 10 of an hour times 10 of an hour which is 18 minutes every time you increase your training by 10 units you can expect your finishing time to fall by 18 minutes now what does the book say it says Finishing time is predicted to decrease by, oh, they do not do anything. They leave it in the raw form. I don't like that. They left it at 0 0.0. Oh, that doesn't do anything. You have to make it a little bit. You have to cook it a little bit. So what does it tell us? One more time, it tells us for every 10 units of training, you can expect your finishing time to go down by 18 minutes. That was it. I was going to do the next problem right now, but next problem has uh, 50, 50 observations. So if this video has actually gotten too long, longer than I thought it was going to be because I, I, I couldn't figure out the blasted calculator uh, but anyway uh, we'll do it in the next video okay next video we're going to do this problem on page number two, 294 4.63 which also has to do with scatter plot all right bye now